Let's see what we have today. Ooh, the STRV. Let's check this out. So I'm sure you guys don't live under a rock and you know that the STRV 103 is coming to War Thunder. This is a tank destroyer made by Sweden. I would say it's a tank destroyer. It's a main battle tank, but it's, it has a fixed gun. You, <laughs> it's not a main battle tank, dude. This is a tank destroyer, dude. But regardless, it's actually very interesting in terms of a vehicle added to War Thunder. So it's the first vehicle we have with a fixed gun. I think, right? Is, does that VT-12 have a fixed gun? I don't think so. I think it has slight degree of gun move. But this has a completely fixed gun. And it relies on it, it, its... What do you call them? Tracks. It's suspension to aim the gun. Which is really weird and really crazy. And I don't know exactly how that's going to work. That being said, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for the main tree one. It also has a butthole, which is <laughs> a shell extractor. <laughs> it's in the butt. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm a child. But still, you know, it, it's going to be a relatively fast vehicle. It has insane sloped armor. But there is a downside to this version itself. This one is the premium one. Now, they do say that they will add uh, normal ones. Who knows how long? That'll take for the normal tech tree ones to come. But per usual, they release the premium ones first. Whatever. Uh, it's going to have a really good gun. It's going to be fast. And it has insane gun depression. The angle of the armor is scary. This is scary to look at from the front. I don't know how it's going to face against normal munitions in War Thunder. I don't know exactly how much armor it has. But it's going to be scary nonetheless. As a result, it good levels of mobility on virtually all terrain types top speed of up to 50 kilometers and even 44 in reverse that's more french than any of the french tanks in this game which is pretty crazy uh it has two types of engines it has a normal tank or a diesel engine and a gas turbine which is probably a nightmare for maintenance but in real life doesn't really matter in war thunder um i'm trying to see what kind of gun this has uh highly situational in these two areas ideally the tank uh if you put in a whole town position the s tank becomes extremely difficult to penetrate thanks to its relatively thin yet extremely sloped upper flight front plate i don't know what br this is going to be since it's a premium i would say it's probably going to be like eight seven maybe nine oh but look how sloped that is that's crazy I made a video on the BMP calling him at the, the door stop, but this thing is 100% a cheese wedge. It's insane. And the, the degree that you can get this thing looking down a hill is going to be absolutely insane. The meme potential of this vehicle is going to be insane. More than it's going to change the game as far as I'm concerned, as in finding new spots to hide a tank. Uh, it has a 105 millimeter l74 similar to the l7 so and it has an auto loading mechanism able to fire every four seconds so four second reload with an l7 is going to be quite nasty that leads me to believe it is going to be around 87 br uh sub caliber and chemical rounds so it's going to have darts and it's going to be overall a decent little tank as a premium though i don't know it's unfortunate that it's uh you know announced as a premium if gaijin let's put it this way if they don't release an s tank in the normal tree along with this for sweden and this is just going to be a standalone premium while they f they make the rest of the tree it's kind of a bad move on their part in my opinion in terms of building good relationships with the community still like this further instills the anger <laughs> in people i know a lot of people who are actually excited to see swedish tanks come and if like the whole Swedish tech tree doesn't come this patch, people are going to be upset about this. Uh, I, you know, personally, it doesn't really matter to me, but like I get both sides, you know, like this should be a premium. This is a 
production. And this isn't the production version of the tank. This is like a, a prototype. And they didn't make many of them. So that's like the perfect spot for a premium. That's what you should make your premiums out of. But at the same time, it's where's the normal one? Hopefully there is the normal one. And uh, I do believe this is there will be a higher tier version of this S tank, which will be pretty interesting to see how it performs to say the least. Now, another vehicle I do want to take a look at while we're here in the dev blog space is uh, the Roycat. I hope I'm saying that right. Roycat. Uh, but this is a South African wheeled armored vehicle and it, it looks awesome. And it's for the British, which is even better. And it's not premium. This is Gaijin hitting the nail directly on the head with what we need in game. A light armored vehicle for a tech tree that has no vehicles like this is perfect. This is absolutely perfect for what we need. That being said, uh, it uses a 76 millimeter cannon that's pretty similar to the automatic. So we're gonna expect uh, APDS rounds, uh, APFSDS rounds at around 300, maybe 350 millimeters of pet. We'll have to see, uh, but that's its only ammo type. It is gonna be rank six of the British ground forces. I don't know exactly where it's gonna go, in the ground force like lineup um, after the warrior before the warrior anywhere like that but i would take a guess that this thing is also going to be around 8790 90 to say that the top but this is going to be the new fastest vehicle in the game in ideal conditions obviously wheeled vehicles don't perform as well off road that's kind of their issue but on the on a map like uh cargo port this thing is going to haul ass which is awesome uh, don't know quite the reload rate, but I would bet it's not too, too bad. It has a sizable turret, uh, so that means the crew can kind of get around and move in there. But a very cool looking vehicle nonetheless. It doesn't look like it has four wheel steering, because in these types of pictures, you would see the, the other wheels turning. Which leads me to believe that this thing might have an issue on any type of inclined surface if you need to get out. Track vehicles are really good at turning their tracks, obviously, whenever they need to, and getting in and out of, like, hiding positions. Whereas wheeled vehicles are good at going fast forward, fast backwards, but anything in between, they kind of get caught up, especially when you put a mix of mud and sand in the way of that. Uh, you know, you have a little bit of an issue. So I don't, I don't think this thing has four-wheel steering. I only see, well, technically four wheels are steering, but not... Uh, the back wheels all wheel steering i should say uh, but regardless i'm excited for this tank i think it's going to be able to spot scout it has a good gun and this is going to mold so well with the chalice at top tier i can't even stress that enough and i know you british guys are just super excited for this thing super excited now a couple honorable mentions from the dev blogs because i kind of i don't want to make like a single video for every dev blog you guys know me but we have the uh, Graf Spree and the Prince Eugen. Prince Eugen is uh, unfortunately gonna be a premium. It's a hipper. We like the hipper, but uh, we already have that in game, so it doesn't really matter. That being said, it's 60 bucks, which is, uh, you know, that's really expensive for a ship that is going to get power creeped in the near, near future. That being said, it's a good ship. It's gonna be a good ship for a while. Uh, <laughs> I don't know exactly how long it's going to take to get uh, to get actually power creeped, but the Hipper in-game right now is actually pretty good. So it's not a bad buy if you have the money and you're a collector of tank or tanks, collector of vehicles. Um, but if you want to really grind more efficiently, I don't think that that's the best purchase. And then we have the Graf Spree coming, which is pretty darn cool. Graf Spree is huge. Look at this thing. Look at those guns. Absolutely insane. So we're, we're coming to the time where we're getting bigger and bigger boats, and I'm pretty excited for it, to be honest. Now, this thing only has two turrets, as you can see, but they each have three guns in them. Big guns. And we're getting very close to, like, pocket battleship territory. I don't know if the Graspy is... Um, I don't know what it's considered. I'm pretty sure it's a heavy cruiser. Yeah, heavy cruiser. Um, but we're getting really close to pocket battleship size, and pretty interesting 
Uh, I think we might have to take a look at Naval real soon here. I know the Mogami's been in the game for a little while, and I still haven't taken that thing out, or the Hipper, or any of the, the new uh, heavy cruisers for that fact. So we might have to take them out and see how the game is unfolding in the Naval aspect. Regardless, it's been your boy Slick. I hope you enjoyed this little dev vlog video. We'll have a video out later on today where I test fire flashes and see if they can kill tanks, which was real fun, let me tell you. <laughs>